must be acting up. So as you may guess, and you're probably right, today's lesson is going to be chapter 13, Electricity. So, why do you think it's important for us to know electricity? Safety of people? Making sure that we know what we're using before we use it on certain people? You don't want to be in a salon chair or, you know, getting a facial done and the person that's using whatever tool they may be using, you want to know that they know how to work that tool and they need to know how it works and why it's working and you want to make sure that they're using the right thing on you. So you need to give that to your clients as well. You need to make sure that you understand what's going on with your tool you need to learn how it works and why you're using it and how to use it. So during this chapter, that's what you'll be able to understand. There's going to be a lot of things that don't make sense at first, and that's okay. Every year when I teach this, I learn something new every time I research new and updated information. So it's okay if you don't understand it at first. If you don't understand something, write it down and we can talk about it in our next, our next live webinar. Okay? So what is electricity? Electricity is the movement of electrons from one atom to another. It exhibits magnetic, chemical, or thermal effects. Electric current is the flow of electricity. So it's the way the electricity flows. So that is your electric current. So you've got a conductor. What is a conductor? It obviously is what conducts or provides the electricity. So it's something that can conduct electricity, which is also, so a certain type of a conductor would be Copper, aluminum, and I'm going to abbreviate, gold, um, and silver. Those are types of conductors, so they can produce electricity. Types of non-conductors, which a non-conductor cannot produce electricity. Types of non-conductors would be what? rubber wire or the, the rubber outside and um, covering the wire because it helps hold in that electricity so it doesn't cause a spark, a fly, fire, things like that. So because they're non-conductors. Plastic and rubber are non-conductors so they can't produce electricity. So the top line shows different types of conductors and the bottom line shows different types of non-conductors. So let's talk about some electrical currents. So the first type of current you are going to have a direct current. And when I talk about direct currents from here on, I'm going to use the abbreviation DC. So it's a constant even flowing current that travels in one direction. So it follows in the same direction at all costs. So we're going to put a flow of one direction. So that electricity is only going in one direction. Okay? Examples of a direct current would be a flashlight, cell phones, and cordless tools. Um, 
and it's usually anything that's produced off of batteries. So batteries is a really good um, example. cell phone, it has a battery, that's what makes it work. But what happens when the phone dies? Right? You have to charge it. And you go into your house and you take the charger and you plug it into the wall outlet, right? It's a direct flow of current. Okay? But let's say that let's back up. So in order to change a direct current, you would need an inverter. An inverter is what's used to change a direct current to an alternating current. And we'll talk about alternating currents in just a minute. So you've got your direct current. In order to change the flow of the direction, of an electrical current, you would need an inverter. And an inverter is what's going to change the direct current to an alternating current, or also known as AC. Okay? So, let's say this is a little, I'm going to put a V here for battery. You can barely see it, I bet. But, Whenever the electricity is produced, it travels in one direction. Does that make sense? So let's say we're charging our cell phone and we're using the plug-in to the wall. Well, let's say you've got somewhere you've got to go, but your phone's not charged. Well, you know how you can remove the charger part, and you can use it into your car, and you switch it to a car charger. That's an example of an, a direct current switch into an alternating current. Okay? So somewhere you would invert, or you would... You would put in an inverter and it would switch up the direction. And I'm not going to show you how that's done just yet because we haven't talked about alternating current. If you have questions about that, let me know. Write them down. I'm going to erase. So now we're going to talk about alternating currents for just a moment. So the second type of uh, electrical current we're going to talk about is alternating.
plugs in to a wall. Okay? If you wanted to change an alternating current to a direct current, it would take a, it would take a rectifier. So And this changes an AC to a DC. Examples of this would be um, your cordless clippers. The batteries would need to eventually be charged, so you'd plug it into the wall for you to charge the batteries of the clippers. So I'm going to draw. So this would actually be here, this would go here, this would go here. So you've got electricity going in two separate directions. Does that make sense? If not, it's okay. Just write down your questions or concerns and write them down and we will talk about it. So if you look here, you can see that the direct current is going in one direction, whereas the AC current is going in two opposite directions. So now we're just going to talk about a little bit about the measurements of um, electricity. And this doesn't take a whole lot um, of notes. This is just something that you're just going to have to um, kind of listen and study and learn on your own. So if we talk about a volt, a volt has abbreviation of a V. And it's just the pressure of force that um, the electricity is giving. So it's the pressure. The next one we're going to talk about is an ampere, and it's an abbreviation with an A, and um, it's the unit of strength, so it's the strength of the electric current. The third one is a milliampere, and its abbreviation is a lowercase m and a capital A, and it is one thousandth of an amp, so it's smaller. And this is used for facials because just a regular A or an ampere is too strong for the face. Or it's just too strong for any of those types of services. Um, the fourth one is an ohm, and it's abbreviated in O. And it's the measure of resistance that the electricity is giving. The fifth one is a watt, and it's a W. And this is how much electricity is being used per one second. So that's actually quite a bit. Um, the sixth one is a kilowatt. And it is 1,000 watts. So 1,000 watts equals one kilowatt. Um, and this is the electricity. This is how electricity in homes are usually measured because there's so much. Um, it's easier um, it's simple. It's more simple. So if you have 1,000 watts, it equals 1 kilowatt. So if a hair dryer is 1,000 watts, you can either say, oh, it's 1,000 watts or it's 1 kilowatt. Make sense? Um, so if you have any questions about that, that's something that you just need to study and understand the measurement. So let's talk about it one more time. So a volt is the pressure of force. An ampere is the unit of strength. A milliampere is um, one thousandth of 
an ampere and that's because they're smaller and it's less aggressive so um, the next one is going to be an ohm and it's the measure of resistance a watt is how much electricity is being used per one second and then a kilowatt is a thousand watts so it's yeah so it's bigger if you have any questions about that write them down and we can talk about that um some safety things that we should talk about um so if you're experiencing some excessive currents from um, a circuit what's going to come into play to help protect a electrical fire a fuse a fuse is what's going to help um, prevent any kind of electrical issues and electrical issues are usually caused by overloads or faulty equipment um, and it happens it's, it happens all the time overloads happen but whenever an overload happens, the first sign of an overload is when the circuit breaker goes off, right? It shuts off the electricity and it saves, and it stops the electricity and it saves either a fire or something really bad happening, okay? So a fuse is what prevents excessive currents from passing through a circuit. The next time we're going to talk about our grip is grounding. Grounding completes the electric circuit and um, it carries, carries it very safely. Um, two appliances. Um, all appliances using electricity must have two connections or two prongs. Right? So you've got your little electrical cord, if you notice on the end that plugs into the wall, you've got two prongs. Right? You have to have those. It's a necessity. And sometimes, if it's a very, very strong um, equipment, there'll be a third one, and that's called your grounding pin. So you've got your grounding pin. Now, your grounding pin is a three prong plug and it's used for extra um, safety, let's just say. It's, it's to help um, to deliver a safer um, current. So, let's say this is our which we'll talk about later. So in this picture here, whatever's in the circle, that's considered your grounding pin. So sometimes, an electrical outlet will have this little button that will have a green dot and a red dot. It's right between your two electrical outlets. That is called a ground fault interrupter. So I'm going to put ground fault interrupter, GFI, and that is um, to protect a bad circuit. Okay? 
These are usually found in where you use like the higher um, voltages of um, electricity. So like your kitchens, your bathrooms, um, outside, um, outside outlets by like patio or somewhere like that in a shop. You're gonna have this little button thing here. And if it ever turns red, you may have to push it to reset. It. And that's to help keep things safe. So that's kind of like a liability for yourself. And um, you can always reset this and it helps keep overloads and you know anything bad to happen. Any questions on that? negative electrode except for the Tesla which we're not going to talk about just yet but that's what I'm getting to in a little bit but all of these it requires a positive and a negative electrode in order for it to work properly so the first one we're going to talk about like I said is galvanic So this here is just a type of galvanic current.
next one is cataphoresis. I'm going to lie for the B. But I did. And I'm going to use the abbreviation of C. And this pushes acidic product into Acidic products pushed into the skin. It would be for your pH balance. That's going to help balance out your pH in your skin. The next one we're going to talk about is anaphoresis.
The next type is going to be your Tesla, high frequency, not like the car that I want. This will be my next car, I'm telling you. Anyways, you've got the Tesla, high frequency. One positive and a negative. It just needs one, right? Just one. Um, anything that this is good for is on page 282 in your textbook. It has the list of things that it's really good for. And um, this is a. This is also known as a, a violet ray. And you cannot use this on pregnant women. You cannot use this on epileptic people. Asthmatic, high blood pressure, excessive feelings in the teeth, sinus blockage, pacemakers, or uh, metal implants. Okay. So this is all I'm going to talk about today because I know that this is a lot of information. Um, so take what I have given you today and create some notes to help you study these um, types of currents and things like that because this is super important for you to know. You need to know the safety and the basic understanding of all these equipment and tools that you are using super important to know. Um, if you guys have any questions or anything like that, just let me know and I will see you tomorrow in part two.